This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at this example about the functional currency. Uh, so what it wants us to go through and do is to show how this transaction would be dealt with within the financial statement. So the usual suspect statements of financial position, statements of profit or loss. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and take you through the journal entries as to how it would be approached uh, in the real world. Okay, and then we can start thinking about the financial statements and exam world as we get towards the end. Okay, uh, so what we've got here, we have a company is there called Jones, who has the functional currency as the US dollar. So any transactions that the business enters into uh, that are in a different currency to the US dollar will need to be translated. Uh, using our rules that, that, that we spoke about before. Initially, you translate it at the historic rate, so the rate in place on the date the transaction took place. You then need to go through there at the reporting date and identify, is it there any monetary items, which will then be retranslated. Uh, any non-monetary items will not be retranslated. Uh, when you do any translation, any gains and losses will go through profit or loss. Okay, uh, so it says here uh, it trades with several suppliers overseas and bought goods. So it entered into a purchase transaction costing 400,000 dinar on the 1st of December 2017. Uh, and then we paid for the goods in January 18 and our year end is somewhere in the middle at the 31st of December. So what we have here is a credit purchase, isn't it? So if we're gonna go through that and have a look at what happens. So the initial transaction, so was that the, on the 1st of December, 2017? Forget about the overseas aspect. Let's just get the debits and credits correct first. You've made a credit purchase. So you debit your purchases and credit your payables. Okay. Nice and simple. If you're struggling with the journal entry for a credit purchase, don't tell me. Okay, uh, there we go. The issue that we've got now is that the value that the transaction was entered into at was 400,000 dinar. Uh, we need to translate it into the functional currency of the dollar, don't we? So what we've got there is that the transaction was entered into on the 1st of December. So we will need to translate it at the rate that was in place on that date. So is that the, the historic rate, the 4.1 dinar to the dollar? So what we've got there to work out that amount, we're going to credit your payables with, is it the 400,000 divided by the 4.1? If it's 4.1 for every dollar, uh, then if there's 400,000 dinar, we need to look at the number of dinar uh, that can then be converted into dollars, so divide it by the 4.1, okay? Uh, what we've got there is, if you tap that into your calculator, is it 97561? And there we have it, okay? 1st of December 2017, we've recorded it, now at the historic rates using is it the the 4.1 dollars or 4.1 dinars to the dollar okay everybody happy with that brilliant what we then need to go through and look at is the fact now that we then chronologically get to the reporting date so at the reporting date is it there the 31st of december uh, we will need to identify our monetary 
and non-monetary balances within the financial statements. And then monetary balances are retranslated and gains and losses go to profit or loss. Uh, and then any non-monetary items are just left at the historic rate. So what we've got there is if we advance on from our initial transaction and look at what happens at the reporting date. So is that there the 31st of December 2017? Okay. Uh, what you've got, if you break down that initial journal entry, uh, the payables and the purchases, then what you've got at the reporting date is inventory. And payables okay now what you've got there is the inventory is non-monetary isn't it so if it is non-monetary we do not translate okay so therefore we leave it at what it was at its historic rate which is there the nine seven five six one dollars That's it. There's, there's nothing to go through there and change. It's non-monetary. It's not readily convertible into cash. You have to sell it. Uh, you then have to go through there and collect the cash from your customer. So it, it's not readily convertible. However, what you've got there is with your payables. That is readily convertible into cash. You can be summoned and paid it immediately. So therefore, what you need to do is you need to translate it at the closing rate. So now what we have here is that our closing rate at December 2017 is the 4.3 dinars to the dollar. So what we have there is we have, is it the 400,000? divided by the 4.3 does that go through there and give me is it 93023 okay so what you've got there is that the value of the payable previously was 97561 it is now the at nine three oh two three that is a difference of four careful get them the right way round little transposition error there four five three eight so therefore that is a reduction in your payable okay uh, so to process that journal entry and the reduction in the payable we're going to have to debit your payables with the four five three eight the credit is the same at four five three eight that there is a credit so that's a gain and that goes in your statement of profit or loss somewhere within your operating costs so reducing your operating costs as it is a gain okay uh how would that go through and appear within the financial statements i know the question doesn't ask you to do so but if it was part of a published company accounts question, what would happen? Uh, well, on the SFP, you would have your inventory. Uh, the inventory at the end of the year is the 97561. Uh, you would also have your payables. 
Uh, the payables at the end of the year are the 93023. So obviously inventory and current assets, payables and current liabilities. And then the statement of profit or loss, you will have a gain on translation. And that gain on translation is there, is it at four, five? Oh, careful. Four, five, three, eight. Okay. There we go. Uh, you would also have within the statement of profit or loss uh, a credit to closing inventory of the 97561. Okay, remember inventory journal at the end of the year, debit the inventory on your position statement in current assets and credit it within the performance statement. So your statement of profit or loss uh, as your closing inventory within cost of sales. Okay, excellent. Uh, what then happens if we go back, is it there to the question? Uh, we then went through and paid it so paid the payable on the 10th of January. So we need to go through there and translate the payment that we make of 400,000 dinars at the rate that was in place on that date. Okay, so on that date there, the historic rate is 4.4 dinars to the dollar. Okay, so what we've got there is the settlement date. So was that the 10th of January 2018? Uh, so what we're going to happen, or what's going to happen now, is we need to work out what the payment is. The payment is recorded the historic rate because that's the rate in place today. So is that the 400,000? divided by the 4.4 uh, tap that onto your calculator i think it gives you 90909 with a little bit of rounding okay uh, so we then need to process the journal entry so get the easier bits first we're making a payment so we credit the bank with the 90909. Uh, and that payment is eliminating the payable, isn't it? So we're going to debit the payable. Uh, what was the value of the payable? Well, when we looked at it at the reporting date last time, the payable was there at the 93023. So we will debit my payable with 93023. Uh, the difference is then a balancing figure. So we have an excess of debit over credit, don't we? So therefore, your balancing figure is your credit. That credit goes to the statement of profit or loss. We like credit in the statement of profit or loss as they are a gain, an increase in economic benefit. And the difference between them, there, I think, is the 2114. Okay, there we go. That's it. Uh, it could appear as a multiple choice question in section A or in section B, uh, likely to be examined numerically, but don't forget it could also examine you on trying to determine the functional currency and what are the characteristics that you need to look at uh, in determining that primary economic environment where we operate. Uh, but if it's a multiple choice, it's likely to be numbers. So the numbers could not use you to work out the gain or loss on the settlements. Uh, the numbers could go through there and ask you to work out the gain or loss on translation of the monetary item at the reporting date. So there's plenty of scope there for some multiple choice style questions. And then also it could form a small part of an individual accounts preparation question. Uh, 
Okay, so within the additional information, you're given a separate overseas transaction that needs to be dealt with and recorded at the reporting date because it hasn't been adjusted since the initial transaction took place. Okay, there we go. So that's IS21. It will get advanced a little bit further on strategic business reporting as we start to look at what happens if we have overseas subsidiaries that are in a different currency to that of the parent. Sounds complicated, uh, but for now, just focus on what we have there within the class notes. Work the examples within the study text on foreign currency. Uh, work the practice kit questions as well, and you shouldn't have too many problems in the world of IS21 and foreign currency. There should be some good marks available for you there.